From the moment you boot up Thunder Ray, the game is imparting a message to you. You're greeted by Ray's earnest and intense glare. Immediately after, you're met with the title screen. Ray is sitting in darkness, only illuminated by the crackling electricity around him and the glow of a neon sign behind him that simply reads, The Goat. This is Ray's show, and you just bought a ticket to it. It would seem that I've accidentally created a theme with my video game review series. I keep talking about indie games that are putting their own spin on a recognized franchise. I don't know how this has happened thrice now, but regardless, it'll be interesting to see what the final statement on this game will be in comparison to the other two. To catch you up, I said Freedom Planet 2 surpassed its inspiration, and Assault Spy was a fresh twist on the genre with surprising new ideas, but had a few flaws that held it back from reaching the same heights as its inspirations. If you couldn't tell by the footage so far, Thunder Ray is very much heavy-handedly, obviously, aping Punch-Out. I don't need a montage to show you this either. If Nintendo released this game and called it Punch-Out 5, no one would question it. No one except me, because I'm smarter than you, and can see beyond the superficial likenesses of these two games. Make no mistake, approaching this game and expecting it to follow the same rules as Punch-Out Wii or Super Punch-Out will only set you up for frustration and confusion. I'll give you credit though, the game can lull you into thinking you're playing as Little Mac. With left-right jabs and body blows, as well as directional dodging and blocking, the game will certainly feel familiar to the average Punch-Out fan. There are some additions though. You can hold a dodge for a long time, making your defensive maneuverability less rhythmic, and there's a new fifth defensive option, holding still to block. Please use this against Millennium Cobra, and save yourself the frustration that I initially had. There's also powered up punches that are executed by holding a trigger or a bumper and punching. This is the part of the review where I let you in on the thought process of my video essays. I like to prepare and make sure that my understanding of a game is adequate enough to ensure that I don't get caught with my pants down while trying to look smart. Too many times I've seen reviewers overlook or not understand a crucial mechanic that would greatly increase their enjoyment of a game. Sometimes, knowledge is the true key to an enjoyable experience. Sometimes it's the difficulty that improves the game and it just wasn't considered. It could even be a glitch or an exploit that makes the game fun. Having said all that, I come to you now admitting that I have no idea what these powered up punches are for. And so long as the game remains fairly overlooked, I'm afraid that a community meta strategy for using them may never pop up. So I invite you in the comments to let me know if you know of any special function that you've discovered for them. Maybe a counter, maybe a special punish, uh, who knows, I sure don't. There's also a super meter as well, but I'm going to save that for later because it'll feed into a grander point. For now, let's talk about something else that's been relatively obvious for you at home watching. The look and animation here is sublime. Ray and all his combatants animate with a wonderful style and clarity. Much like Skullgirls and Cuphead, the hand-drawn 2D animation being the entire game as if it was sprite work is obviously an arduous task that pays off spectacularly. Mixing in different styles and eras of animation gives some particular fights memorability and personality beyond even what Punch-Out has to offer. No offense to Punch-Out either, it's just that this motherfucker right here looks like Adventure Time. If any one thing was already going to sell people on the game, it'd be the animation. I don't think I really need to hype it up more than I already have. Instead, I want to focus on the theming of the game. This is why I really made this video, because that confusion from Punch-Out players feeds into the theme of the game. Let me set this up for you. So in most Punch-Out games, you dodge and hit. Dodge and hit, dodge and hit, dodge and hit, that's the whole game. Hit without dodging, you get blocked, lose stamina, and can't hit anymore until you dodge. When you do dodge, this is Little Mac's chance to do some damage. He can get his little combo as a reward, and then the process is repeated over and over again. In Thunder Ray, there is no stamina. You can never not hit. Ray never gets tired, he never needs to take a breath, he can just keep punching, blocked or not. What may seem the most bizarre, though, is the fact that you can't counter-punch. After a successful dodge, you don't get a free combo. The opponent can immediately start dodging or blocking after like one punch, if that. The core of Punch-Out is gone, what, what are you supposed to do? Hit and dodge. Not dodge and hit, hit and dodge. Because it doesn't matter if they block or not, they'll take that chip damage. And they'll get hit by half your punches, and you know why? Because this isn't Punch-Out. 
Thunder Ray is not the underdog. He's the champ. He starts out as the champ. This is the story of the greatest boxer of all time finally getting to let loose on some alien villains. Ray doesn't ever need to stop punching. His furious barrage is unending. He'll only stop to hold a dodge and make the opponent feel stupid. He read that shit. He's just better. He's him. Little Mac has to use the power of his opponents against them, taking advantage of their giant flailing limbs to counterattack. Ray doesn't have to use such countermeasures against his opponents. He has all the strength he needs to overwhelm his opponents. When Mac finally gets a knockdown, he limbers up, stretches, hypes himself up to recover his health. All Ray needs to do is play to the crowd. With his now iconic in my mind, oh! he ensures the entire audience that his streak will not be broken. Little Mac can only unleash his super moves by finding the perfect opportunity, the perfect weak spot on his opponents, and he can lose his chance just as quickly. Ray, on the other hand, he has a super meter. One that gains with every hit, dodge, block, and whiff. Doesn't go away. It's always building. Mac has to scrounge and scavenge for his super opportunity, but for Ray, it's inevitable. <laughs> yes, the game is difficult. These aliens are monstrous and strange. They'll come at you with all manner of martial art and magic. But that's okay. After all, it's all right there in the name. This game isn't about boxing. It's about Thunder Ray and his power. Three, four.